From the morning reading, the SPX, the Dow, the NASDAQ break short-term support on heavy volume. Be defensive. FDX is up. Nike falls after hours on earnings per share. Breath weakened as decliners led compared to the prior session. 2347 to 673 on the New York Stock Exchange and led 2369 to 528 on the NASDAQ. On the S&P 500 snapshot, the biggest loss in five months and over 100 trading sessions without a single 1% loss. That chain was broken. The S&P 500 opened at its daily high and proceeded to tumble throughout the day, ending the sell-off with a 1.24% loss, its largest since October. The U.S. Treasury puts the closing yield of the 10-year note at 2.43%. The streak has finally ended. The S&P 500 stretch of more than 100 days without a 1% decline finally ended. There have been 17 other long streaks without a big drop, and most of them have seen stocks quickly recover. On average, it took the S&P only three weeks and a further 1% decline before fully recovering to a new high. The ends of streaks like this have not been a good excuse for becoming bearish. On the negative side, the drop was led by financials. When investors smell trouble, they tend to get rid of financial stocks quickly because they are usually exposed to whatever is about to hit the broader market. When the S&P has recently been at a high and then financials are well below their own high, it has been a drag on returns. The NASDAQ wiped out a month's worth of gains. Tuesday was the fourth time in history of the NASDAQ composite that is within 0.5% of a multi-year high then wiped out its past month of gains in a single day. Surprisingly, the composite rallied over the next two to three weeks each time, gaining more than 2%, and two of the three continued to rally in the weeks after that. The dates were in 1994, February 4th, and 2013, April the 3rd, and 2016, 9-9. In other reading, major stock indices suffer biggest drop this year. Small caps and transports looked even worse. Banks lead financials lower on falling bond yields. Falling dollar boost gold euro nears test of its February high. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.37 a.m. Mountain Time, and I am recording this in preparation for the market day of March the 22nd, 2017. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only, and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. Let's go ahead and dive into the morning report. And at the time of this cut, we had a bit of weakness, but actually when we get to the charts, you'll see this was actually a recovery from the overnight lows. The S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow are all down um, just below scratch. Russell's down a bit more, um, a little bit more than a quarter of a percent. Crude oil is down fairly significantly, down 1.35%. Euro's down about 0.1, just below scratch. Long bonds up about a third, and gold is down just below scratch. And overseas action, looks like everybody's open. China down about half a percent. Hong Kong down over 1%. Japan down pretty large, down over 2%. In Europe, we have Germany down about half a percent, and the United Kingdom down about 0.9 of a percent. And macroeconomic reports for today of note for the United States, we have existing home sales, the weekly crude oil inventories, and then looking forward to tomorrow, we have the weekly unemployment claims, Fed Chair Yellen speaking, new home sales, the weekly nat gas storage report, and FOMC member Kashkari speaking. Um, and then also later, FOMC member Kaplan speaking. So um, quite a bit of macroeconomic reports. Um, not so much today as there are tomorrow coming up. In terms of current volatility conditions, obviously yesterday's action was a very big um, thrust up. 
But um, there's some news within the news that's kind of unusual. Even after yesterday's big, big move, and you see down here, we'll go ahead and go down to the bottom. This was a three standard deviation move on the S&P, a four standard deviation move on the Russell, over a two standard deviation move on the NASDAQ, and a three standard deviation move on the Dow. Those are very, very large moves, and especially considering the 100 sessions or more prior to this, we had not had more than a 1% drop in the S&P 500. So uh, this volatility was a huge expansion out of really kind of uh, very little. And you see the short-term VIX, though, still very, very low. I mean, this is only a 14.23 after yesterday's action. The regular VIX is at a 12.47. We can consider normal bull market volatility anything between a 12 and a 15. And this is at the low end of that. Um, so while as a percentage basis, the VIX did jump yesterday, it is certainly not in an area yet, and it, obviously it could continue to grow, but it is not yet in an area where there is significant fear in the market. Um, SKU has been high, and this was one of the warnings that we've been talking about in recent sessions. Um, this price action yesterday, while um, fairly extreme by normal measures, uh, certainly, we were looking for a big move. We'd seen the second highest SKU score in history just a few sessions ago. I think it was like a 154. Um, so there were signs that there was um, uh, some unusual activity in market breadth, some kind of weird market breadth scores. We also saw a lot of commercial hedgers were short. Um, that this action yesterday happened uh, was not a big surprise for those that are following this market preview uh, YouTube channel. Uh, yet at the same time, we have to say that uh, the size of the move was uh, perhaps uh, unusual in its scope. Now, where does it go from here? Uh, well, short-term VIX, 14.23. askew still elevated. Big standard deviation moves. Uh, let's go to the charts and see put this all into context. So we would had, of course, in the post-election period, a huge run-up with nary a pullback in um, the indices. We'd had a lot of sideways action of late. Uh, we'd had already the break of diagonal support um, had been broken earlier, and we were in market um, phase five, which is a, was a weak warning. Um, but certainly with the break of the horizontal support, you know, this becomes a much more significant warning. Now, if you look at in terms of thus far, in terms of continuation on this, you notice that the overnight session did go lower, but has reversed. And as, as it stands right now, is actually above yesterday's close, just barely. Um, this is um, some 45 minutes before the market opens that we're doing this video as you see this particular price action. So uh, bottom line, you're seeing um, a lot of um, uh, increasing warnings and some significant technical um, support levels being broken. You've got all kinds of important moving average lines and um, short term support. But you still have to put this in context that the longer terms, the intermediate terms and the longer terms are still very much bullish. We're way above the cloud. The cloud is still sloped up. You notice that we came and kind of um, bounced in this area where the prior resistance now turned potentially support um, channel line occurred. Um, this has been drawn a long time ago, was in place when this um, breakout occurred with this most recent set of new highs. Then um, the other thing I would make um, some attention to, and I don't have it shown on here, but if you draw FIB retracements from the, uh, the low back before the election up to the current price action, and then also another FIB retracement from this last significant swing low to the high, you'll see that there's a cluster of 
um, fib retracement levels that come in right about this um, 2325 and this 2300. The other thing I want to draw attention to with that level at 2325, if we take a look at our um, technical levels for today, and these are something um, from a report that I put together for our members to help them with um, their intraday trading. Well, the, the technical levels for today, you have the 50-day moving average at 2320, roughly. Um, I think if you consider that um, this area between this 2325, 2320, down to the round number 2300, you've got these FIB clusters, you have the kind of the top, this the resistance of this prior sideways action, a lot of volume and so forth. Um, there's going to be um, significant, significant levels of support to come into play in the not too far from here. So if we do continue to go lower, now we may very well pivot right off of this right here and, you know, find ourselves up. Um, and a couple, three weeks from now, as one of the morning authors suggested, many times these kinds of moves, you know, just end up reversing and uh, back to new highs within a couple, three weeks. Um, so they actually become buying opportunities. And this is probably what this is at this point. Now, what is the bottom? Is the bottom already in or is the bottom going to be in, you know, sometime in the next two, three trading sessions? Uh, that is for short term trading um, decision making. But in terms of the more intermediate to longer term expectations, um, these kinds of pullbacks within the context of these kinds of moves are still expected to be um, bullish and their opportunity in the intermediate to long term. Now, if we continue to degrade, that would be um, uh, important and we continue to watch what we call change and rate of change. We've had significant change and we've had a significant acceleration in the rate of change in the last 36 hours. That being said, um, we have not done that much damage yet and i'm trying to get a balance here between the amount of damage that was done in the short term versus the amount of damage that was done to the intermediate to long term at this point and from what we know at this time now and the other markets very much the same picture it's the same thing on the dow the break of not just diagonal but now horizontal support in terms of the uh, nasdaq very significant breakdown here and in terms of the russell it had a four standard deviation move now remember this one was the weakest and we've been talking about this this was the weakest coming in um to this move of the four and you look at this uh, even with a four standard deviation move it just barely gets below the cloud and just barely below cuts below its recent horizontal support so, you know, it's still not even below the support area if you draw your box all the way back through here, which could be very easily done. The Russell's been in a sideways action after a huge explosive fast move coming out of the post-election period, which is off the chart here. It went sideways and it's been sideways, you know, since the middle of December and it's still within the context of that sideways pattern even after that four standard deviation move yesterday. So that's why I caution about being overly um, concerned about the move from yesterday yet. Now, gold, uh, of course, this is a safe haven play, and gold did have a big move up yesterday, but it's still not even a higher high from the recent action. And as a percentage, you know, the gold move was not the kind of humongous move that you might expect when you see the Russell down four standard deviations and the S&P down three standard deviations. Other similar markets uh, that might be defensive plays, bonds, again, you know, it was up, but I would suggest not a huge run for the gates being seen. There was not a huge rotation into safe haven status as, as of yet. Um, in terms of crude oil, crude oil, um, saw again some weakness, but not perhaps the kind of breakdown that you might have expected uh, with the size moves that you saw in the equity markets. 
and then let's finally take a look at the VIX. And this, um, there's a couple things going on. You got some rollover going on with the volatility products. That certainly had probably some play in that um, as volume moves into the new contract. Um, and um, right now, our VIX is at a 12.37. This is not the land of fear. Um, this is not the land of excessive put buying. Uh, at all uh, and so um, right now this volatility is not even expanded beyond uh, you know the short-term uh, resistance area so if we start to see the VIX start to pop 14 15 and then um, up above 15 to the 18 area uh, you know that at that point we're going to be paying a lot more attention that this may have longer legs on the downside than what's being projected by the volatility markets at this time okay i think that's probably enough on the charts there let's go ahead and go to the daily report and there are some significant changes here since our last uh, market preview we are still market phase five but it's gone from a week market phase five warning with the break of diagonal support to now both the break of diagonal and horizontal support on our most important market the s p also in terms of the three market timing signals and we use um, three different systems all mechanical in nature the first one comes to us from investors business daily it has gone to uptrend under pressures for so for the first time in a very um, significant period of time we have um, something other than a bullish signal on this first signal the gmi index has weakened significantly it's gone to a four out of six and the more sensitive gmi two to a four out of eight but it is still holding on to the buy signal that has been in place since 11 10. so um, still bullish there on the stock charts decision point scoreboard status no changes here as of yet we had already seen some deterioration in the short term prior to yesterday's action and we had gone to mix signals on the short term that's still the same situation intermediate term and long term are still bullish um, with only one red arrow on a long term indicator from the nasdaq side so um, again in the context of all this we have some warnings here and some significant warnings to our kind of short to into the intermediate term this is an intermediate term signal that comes from ibd um, so there are uh, definitely some signs that uh, weakness and deterioration are in the market and yet at the same time the overall consensus here is still in that intermediate to longer term still an expectation of probability to the bullish side in terms of the position sizing models you see there has been a change here as well in the portfolio investor position sizing model that has now dropped to 50 percent the volatility based system is still in that 75 to 100 percent um, position in terms of the intermediate term market posture we've seen some deterioration here and we have been in recent sessions vacillating between weak bear and extremely strong bull uh, with yesterday's action it does fall back into the weak bear for the s p and the dow this is also being reinforced by a falling sentiment line so that has been another sign that we had seen of late of some um, loss and momentum to this bullish action nasdaq still holding on to exceptionally strong bull uh, russell the weakest of them has now fallen back into strong bear intermediate term market posture so this should also reinforce what you've been seeing in terms of the relative strength between the the various indices the nasdaq continues to be the best performer um of late and the russell the weakest of late in terms of the hedge warning status an important change here we've gone from zero plus which is normal with some cautionary um, aspects to a uh, level one and we um we draw a lot of attention to this while level one is a caution light we think of this like a red light setup where you see a yellow you don't just put the gas on 
uh, and accelerate through a yellow light. No, the proper thing to do is you become hypersensitive and hyper aware of the conditions, the environmental conditions around you, and you start um, becoming more defensive in your posture. Um, level one can potentially deteriorate and go to level two very, very quickly. And if we were to see a follow through day today, with um, a standard deviation or two size move to the downside, we could easily see uh, ourselves going from a zero plus to a one with today's session to a two tomorrow in very, very quick order as the situations deteriorate. Right now, this is an elevation in the hedge risk level that we observe in the markets, but um, it's just a level one. It's caution. It's not more than that, but it is giving us um, a heads up that things are changing and the rate of change has started to accelerate. In terms of the strategy opinions, um, the, um, the VIX was so super low, it actually, with yesterday's action, just came with in the acceptable threshold to initiate new positions for novice traders. Now, in terms of initiating a new option income strategy in the context of yesterday's short-term price action, I would suggest um, some caution. We made a number of our own adjustments and option income strategies yesterday where we uh, uh, closed for a short period of time some positions and then put into what we call pause where we're waiting for the market to stabilize and then we'll then roll down um, to the same expiration period um, and at some point here in the short-term future. So uh, we're still willing to engage in option income strategies in the current market condition, but we are certainly being a bit more defensive and a bit more careful about our timing of these um, adjustments at this point. Now, in terms of initiating a brand new position in a covered call strategy or a put selling, well, let's go to put selling first. In terms of put selling, we are potentially in nothing more than a um, pullback within a bull market, which is ideal for put sellers to be able to look for opportunities from their watch list to be able to put on new positions. Now, especially in a market that has had a significant um, uh, change in the hedge risk level of late, you might want to make sure that you consider defined risk positions and position size in the scale that you're willing to own. So. Uh, you might want to start out uh, with putting puts and put spreads, ideally, put spreads on those positions that you are most willing to own and, um, and size them right. And then as um, you find the signs and symptoms of bottoming action coming into place across not just the index, but your sector and industry group and your individual watch list symbols, then you start to perhaps come a bit more aggressive in layering on some additional puts and put spreads. In terms of cover calls, I'd like to probably see um, uh, some bottoming type action before initiating any kind of new positions. And, um, and certainly going into this, we were already very conservative on our cover call strategies using a one-to-one -one ratio of out of the money and in the money strikes and also one-to-one -one ratio of high beta, low beta uh, because we had seen the, the, um, the opportunity for seeing a lot of capital appreciation on the underlying stock uh, to be somewhat limited in the current market conditions. So an awful lot of the premium that's being made on cover call strategies right now are being made off the premium that's being sold, not the stock itself. Now let's go down here to individual areas of warning and you're gonna see when we talk about change and rate of change, this is what we're talking about. There is a lot of red here now into the volatility area. Uh, market in decline, sharp increase warning has flashed with yesterday's action. Interesting enough, we're still in a VIX daily squeeze. Um, so volatility in the short term has uh, certainly, as a percent move, has moved from very low levels to an increase, and yet, and yet has in the larger context still remains very, very low. Distribution day count went into warning with five on both the S&P and the NASDAQ. SKU has been elevated for quite a few sessions and that still remains elevated. 
for the first time in quite some time. The expected move out on the 10 days now more than 40 points. So quite a bit of change here into the volatility area for these warning thresholds. In terms of the trend-based group, everything here is in warning status. We have market phase five, and this has gone from a weak warning to a stronger warning with the break of horizontal support. We have the weak bear, and we have the New York Stock Exchange new highs, new lows indicator with 483 on the new lows yesterday. We have with the key intermarket risk aversion indicators, all five are now risk off, and we're seeing growing angle and separation on these indicators. From a fear and greed index, from a sentiment standpoint, we now are down in the fear area. We're not yet extreme, but certainly it wasn't that long ago we were actually extreme greed. And um, that has been deteriorating over the last couple weeks and is now down into a 36. In terms of sector specific, as you uh, may have heard already, utilities was the big winner. This is the value of having some defensive orientation to your market portfolio uh, utilities was actually positive for the day and we've been talking about utilities for several weeks now as being um, that most consistent performer in the uh, multiple different time frames also other defensive areas consumer staples real estate and telecom all the defensive areas being the best performing at either being positive and certainly with better breath um, or uh, holding on to their value, certainly much better than the risk on parts. Financials down almost 3%, materials down over 1.5%, as was industrials. So the risk on kind of parts, you know, kind of universally negative market breadth, and then also um, down the worst. From um, the intermediate short and long-term market postures by sector specific you see this consumer staples and the utilities are the two sectors that are holding up the best whereas um, retail and energy are certainly um, some of the worst performers and we go to the percent change and again look at this utilities look at that three month performance relative to the others one of the better performances and definitely the best performance on the one month the five day and then also the one day so as the market started to go sideways um, utilities became a larger and larger contributor to the positive performance of some people's portfolios okay this is probably more than enough for today big session we do want to um, hit the disclaimers here and I'm going to go through some slides here real quick if you see something of interest that you want more time on just hit the pause button You'll notice there's a number of hyperlinks to take you to greater details. And we'll get over here to the disclosures. Uh, hit the pause button if you need more time to read the disclaimers. Also note the hyperlink down here at the bottom of the slide for the full set of disclosures. Manage that risk every single trading day and you'll find your consistent performance is enhanced. And each and every day, we hope that you have a good trading session.